Hello, queens and kings. This is Dana Star Coats, Killer Queen Antique Jewelry. I, I recorded some content for you, for you in Gloucester, England, at an antique center called Upstairs Downstairs. I had the privilege of meeting the love, one of the lovely proprietors. Her name was Bruce. I didn't even get to walk she through the whole shop. She was able to spent all day allow me to cases. open these cabinets and just dig into jewelry from oh beautiful thing half ten in the morning until I didn't leave until after three p.m. I actually spent the entire day going through these cabinets and picking treasures for you all. It was in these next few cases that I bought the bulk of the beautiful items that you'll see. It was from a dealer, and her name was Anne, and she passed away recently. And it was her partner that was selling these pieces on. She had always been a dealer in the shop, but she would only bring in a few things. Many of these items that I'm bringing to you were her life's collection. All of her things are fantastic, and I can't wait because now that Ruth, the, one of the proprietors of the shop, knows that I love these items, and I hope that you love them too, she'll be bringing me in more. So I can't wait to go back and wait to show you all the rest of the treasure that I'm able to find from this lovely woman, Anne, and all of the beautiful things that she was able to collect. The shop was wonderful and eclectic, uh, from vintage vinyl to what you saw and, and what you will see from Georgian antiques, Victorian antiques, Edwardian antiques, uh, Art Deco antiques. I especially loved, I didn't really get to walk through the shop because I, I focused on the jewelry. I can't wait to go back and spend more time and actually go through the entire shop. Now, if you know anything about me, um, I love vintage clothing. And there was a dealer here that she had some really cool pieces. I'm, I, I have an affinity for leopard print and a special affinity for, it, it's awful, but it is vintage, it is antique for real leopard. And that hat was real leopard. That's not a faux print. I thought that wall hanging was just so cool and unique. I, I had to capture it for you. Now, uh, Ruth's brother, who's actually the owner of the building, and I think he started the business around 25 years ago, uh, specializes in furniture and lighting. But I, I think it was Ruth and possibly... Um, the, the owner's wife, who just passed away two years ago, unfortunately, who brought in all of the other unique bits of jewelry and, you know, brought in the, the dealers that were able to deal these other pieces. There's just loads of beautiful porcelain and glassware. I, I can't wait to go back and actually film the rest of the shop for you. Of course, I'll be spending a lot of time finding jewelry for you all. 
and myself, I, I bought myself a pair of earrings. And believe it or not, they're modern. <laughs> I didn't buy myself any antique earrings. But you all know I collect and buy what I love. So if any of the pieces stay with me, I'm quite happy to keep them. This woman's collection, what I've got to see so far, is so incredible. And I was so privileged to buy them because you just don't find, quite often find, one dealer that you completely connect with. She had so much, and, and I was happy to buy it all. Well, not all of it, but, but I think I'll get there. <laughs> Hello, queens and kings. It's Dana Stewart Coates, Killer Queen Antique Jewelry, with the hall, pretty much the mother of all halls. This is the most incredible items that I've ever got in one antique shop. This antique shop was located in Gloucester, England, and it's called Upstairs Downstairs. And the proprietor, well, the proprietor I met was a lady called Ruth. She was there on a Thursday with several friends of hers that were friends and dealers in the shop. And they meet there every Thursday. And personally, I can't wait to go back. They were just so lovely and welcoming. Let's get on with what I found there. Now, I'm also going to show some items that I'll have available at tomorrow's sale. The first item is Georgian. She's 15 karat gold and carved coral. Now, she's definitely been sized because it's a healthy seven and three quarters at the moment. And ladies' fingers weren't usually that big in the day. So, she has been XRF'd. But unfortunately, it contains no hallmarks. But we know from her subject matter and her style of carving that she's definitely Georgian. Let's see, next piece. Well, let's show you something incredible. This is probably late Georgian, early Victorian from the style of the carving as well and the material. I'm just about positive that she is ivory. She was listed as bone, but she has all of the properties that ivory possesses. And you can see her cross hatching. Now, the carving is incredible. And the only reason I would not rate her a thousand percent is she's had a historic repair. Someone went in with an early glue and it looks like a Deco C clasp. I do believe she was probably part of a fantastic necklace or maybe a bracelet. She's still an incredible brooch and I would wear her as a pendant or on my wrist any, any day. Let's see. Let's show you a Scottish piece. White chalcedony and banded agate. This is likely Victorian. 
as it was definitely part of a belt and a buckle, well, belt buckle. Now, the belt buckle itself is pinchback, but the new bit that they added to it is gold filled. Something in the same or similar style, but I do believe that this was originally just a brooch. Well, just a brooch. Beautiful moonstone. I can't imagine how wild I went in this shop. These are Colette set cranberry glass. Colette is uh, dog tooth, sawtooth. Absolutely Georgian. Uh, pinchback metal as well, but the brooch, the pin, and the hook are gold. They're nine carat. Let's find some earlier pieces. Oh, this one is nine carat and completely hallmarked. Of course, bullseye, at, bullseye agate and a hair keeper. That's a little woven locket of hair. So it was either a sweetheart pin or a morning brooch, but it's definitely Victorian. Put these pieces over here so you can see it. I don't want to confuse the camera. What else can we find for you? How about this fantastic beauty? Now, this is actually XRF'd in as nine carat. And it is, let's see, E. Beasley died February 15th, 1854, age 61. No, that's the back. And of course the curls are Prince of Wales. The front is enamel and gold and curl. Of course the Victorians use pearls to signify mourning or tea and tears. And one of the prettiest features is the little bow on the safety, on the pin safety. And there's a bit of what was probably in a shop once upon a time. I'll make sure it's not holding a link together, but I'll leave it or remove it up to you. Now, this one I could only, of course, wipe off because of the fabulous hair work inside of it. I couldn't get a good dip, but I did wipe the pearls thoroughly and treat them with oil because, you know, we don't want those to dry out. Staying with the morning theme, let's go with Whitby Jet. Carved in a Maltese cross. and beautiful rose bouquet on the top. Of course, these are all morning pieces. Incredible Whitby jet large cross. Whitby jet stone. Now to be found in Whitby, England. Actually, 
almost akin to amber. Develops the same way in bogs. Now, it became so popular for morning jewelry in the Victorian era that they had to come up with other materials. This is a beautiful locket that's made from a material called vulcanite. And it's adorned with pheasants. It was probably a man's locket or contained, you know, it was a morning locket for a man. You can see I've treated that with facial oil as well. It was very, very dry. Victorian rock crystal with applied glass. These pieces are not only very rare, they're very desirable. Knocking things over here while I'm bringing things to show you. Uh, this is completely hallmarked. It's nine karat gold. And that's, of course, a blue moonstone. nice thing about brooches that were a little bit later even if it wasn't really really heavy I think this is around two grams uh, they did mark them and you can see that was marked by a jeweler and the manufacturer have another morning piece nine karat gold tiny sea pearls and a crescent moon. Oh, we missed the Georgian piece. Tiny but prolific Georgian lace pin. Now, like, these are the tiny pins that I've told you about that they would pin at their collar or their cuffs. This one is hard stone. And you can tell it's a morning pin. Just a gorgeous little piece. Find you. One of my favorites, Bohemian Glass. Czechoslovakian Cased Glass. Perfume Pendant. With the original glass stopper. Now this was a method where they would make a clear glass, then coat it in cranberry, and then take away bits of it. This is late 1800s. Oh, what else do I have? A Grand Tour piece. I've told you about the Grand Tour when wealthy Victorians would travel across the continent. Now, this is a little glass vanity case. Not only is it incredible in an incredible condition, it still has the original sticker.
It is a true Graham Tour piece. What else do we have for you? I mean, loads, but. Just trying to figure out if we've done. Nope, we haven't done all of the Victorian. Of course not. This is also hallmarked. The shaft of the pen would be 800 silver. The top of the pen would be fine silver. It is completely hallmarked Victorian in the top. It is rose faceted amethyst, you know, rose cut. And a long hat pen. Pinchback, Etruscan, a beautiful amethyst in the center of this. If, of course, Etruscan Revival and a brooch. Victorian Etruscan Revival. In case there was any doubt about that. These are also Victorian and Hallmarked. I'm talking about the stunning nine karat gold Persian turquoise earrings. And if Victorian per turquoise is your thing, as it is mine, this is turquoise and garment. And it's a wasp or a fly or a bee or it's, it's just incredible. Antique sterling and gilt. Bug brooch. The ring part of this would be more modern. It would probably be vintage, not antique. But the coin in the center is absolutely antique. And it's in fantastic condition. Of course, it's Victoria. And I believe this one is 1860. The coin is dated 1860. Edwardian, and it's a man's posy holder. It would go in his buttonhole and hold his flower. Oops, we still had another piece of Victorian. Nine carat rose gold. And an incredible opal. Of course, the staff, because it's a hat pin, is 800 silver. How did I miss this? This is Edwardian. 1904, 18 karat gold. Pinky rubies and rose cut diamonds. And it is completely hallmarked. Solidly in deco right now. Green apple jade, and I've tested all these other stones. I forgot to test these. If they are a paste, they're 
pretty fantastic. That's a large pendant on a very long Art Deco chain. Beautiful Art Deco screw back marcasite earrings. Art Deco Bristol Blue. They were probably on, I, no, they weren't on different wires because those are those really long French hooks that they did with Deco earrings. But this is, of course, rare Bristol Blue glass. Rare in that they quit making it during the Art Deco period. And only started remaking it in the 1990s. Carved in Taglio rock crystal. And the stones are rock crystal as well. Art Deco. Rhodium plated. Well, this is Edwardian. And it comes up as coin silver, a low grade of silver, but it is a compact and it would have been on a chatelaine. Beautiful Art Deco. These are crystal and pearls, sterling silver brooch. Art Deco marcasite and sterling coral ring. Beautiful coral ring, actually. Deco Cherry Bakelite. Chunky Cherry Bakelite. Stretch is still fantastic on it. Four strands of honey amber. Four graduated stands, strands of faceted amber. Beautiful necklace. A large, stunning cherry Bakelite necklace. And like the bracelet, it's on stretchy. It goes over your head. I'll give you the length on that tomorrow. Rose gold crystal lace pin. I think we should move to no, there's still some there's still some deco. And I do have other bracelets as well. This necklace is crystal. and uranium. What else do we have? Is it all silver from now on? Well, until we get into some newer things. 
This, when I first saw it, I thought it was a needle case. It's engraved DD and 1920, so the Roaring 20s. And what it is, is a cigarette holder. If it didn't have a filter, and even if it did, you wouldn't stain your fingernails. And it is homeworked inside as well. But we could put a loop through it really easy and it would be a fantastic pendant or just something really cool for your desk or dresser. Or maybe you smoke when you want to use it. Okay. There's an Art Deco, beautiful amber and green glass Czechoslovakian bracelet. Oh, that's too modern. Let's find the old pieces first. Lord Sterling Cuff. Victorian. It's engraved HH on the back. Which, you know, Bob can always take that out. Gorgeous buckle bracelet with a safety. Another sterling buckle bracelet. Beautiful Art Deco expandable bracelet. Gorgeous Art Deco buckle cuff. Another Art Deco expandable bracelet, sterling. Victorian, sterling with 12 karat gold over, rose gold. Love those. Oh. That's an antique panel bracelet. This is a Norwegian enamel panel bracelet. Antique enamel panel bracelet. It's quite heavy. Uh, oh, I missed the Edwardian sugar tongs. with the Georgian shell motif. They are Edwardian. And I'm looking around to see, oh no, there's still pieces here. This is of course Art Deco and Scottish. And their antler. Oh my gosh, how can I forget the Art Deco glass? Cobalt Venturine, which is gold. Cased Samarzo. Murano. It, it is, uh, the color is so intense. And it's a long strand as well. You know, oftentimes they were so short. I haven't had white wedding cake beads for ever because as soon as I get them, they sell out. These are white with pink roses, forget-me-nots, and a venturine gold icing. Tell 
Tell me you've seen a prettier set of white wedding cake beads. Uh, I don't think I have. And I have many strands of wedding cake myself. This is a new poles of light and they are huge. Of course, these are the Czechoslovakian colored poles of light. And this is like a pale cornflower. A pale periwinkle. It'd probably be a better explanation or description of it. There's an incredible Czechoslovakian crystal flapper necklace. This is the bottom. This is the middle. And this is the length. There are a couple Art Deco necklaces as well. I don't want this to run too long, so I'll just show you quickly in my hand. Now, one of these, they're both Czechoslovakian crystal, but one of them, no, they're both set in sterling. I don't know why I was thinking they weren't. Now, one is a pale form of periwinkle and the other is intense cobalt. Um, what's left? <laughs> like I haven't shown you enough already. Oh, a couple modern pieces. Or shall we say more modern pieces? I don't think they're modern modern, but we'll do the queen first. Now, from what I've found, this is a rather rare necklace that they made for her coronation. And of course, it's her initials. It's sterling. And it's in, the crown is enameled. And it's set with tiny diamonds. A beautiful necklace and since we're doing fine and lovely necklaces let's do a modern tanzanite and diamond cross they don't have the most intense deep violet, but they are a very high grade of clarity. And it is on a nine karat gold chain. Both pieces are completely hallmarked. These earrings are sterling and they are gilt and they are rose cut white sapphires. Now I know it looks like they're a citrine but it's actually just gold behind the earring. These are modern, but they, they look like antique. I had to buy this bracelet. I do love Mexican silver, especially when it's fine Mexican silver. This is huge. I'll weigh this for you tomorrow. It's a beautiful Texco piece. There we go. I'm gonna say from the design 70s or 80s. It's very brutalist. I just, I like it. You like what you like, right? The rest of it or is, I'll show you tomorrow. But I hope that 
you love this haul and I hope you find some items that you love because I love each and every single piece of it. Now, no sale tonight, which is Friday. We will have a sale tomorrow, Saturday. Um, I'm going to start it at noon Pacific Standard Time and 3 p.m. Eastern. And that's 8 p.m. here for me in England. Thank you for stopping in, my queens. I hope you love the haul. And I hope you can't wait to have more because I can't wait to go back there. Good night.